Hi, I'm Danny with an I. I'm Gory B. Movie. And we're horror addicts. And we just saw Maxine with three X's. So we finally got out and went and saw Maxine, I'm wanting to for a week now, if not, but finally did it. <laughs> We're like the last people to see it. Yeah, probably. But, you know, we just moved, so it's been kind of a waste, but we're getting back into the groove. New place! Yeah! Great setup, by the way. I love your couch. Thank you. All right, so Maxine, starring Mia Goth, the third movie by Ty West. So this is the third one because there was X, mm -hmm. and then there was Pearl. Which was a prequel. And now we have Maxine, and I, I feel like after X, because X was pretty good. X was like kind of a, a good throwback slasher, a good like mm -hmm. throwback to Texas Chainsaw Massacre and stuff. And then you had Pearl and you're like, oh wow, they just they just took that bar and like went up with it, especially with the acting, like her performance in that. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. And it was so unlike any other horror movie I'd ever seen. You know, it was just so original. So it's like the bar was, the bar was high. X had kind of your typical slasher format. And when she played old lady Pearl, it was kind of weird, but <laughs> in the prequel when she's Pearl, oh my god, she just like, it was such a weird psychological, it wasn't a thriller, it was a slasher, but it was so different and it was so method. Like, and and crazy. it was crazy because you, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I really was rooting for her. Like, I wanted her to get that part. I wanted her to succeed, even though she was, she was a crazy banana pants. I wanted her <laughs> and the scarecrow to live happily ever after, but. I mean, you know. It gets itchy. Like everything else, it kind of fell apart for her. So this is the third one, and it's a completely different movie as well. Like he did not make the same movie twice in other three movies he made. He didn't make the movie same movie three times because this yeah. time he's sizzling with bacon. Yeah, Kevin Bacon being a creepy stalker with gold teeth. Kevin Bacon can do no wrong. But he's like hired to follow her around and kind of persuade her, and she's being stalked. But we're not gonna really go into that because I don't want to do spoilers. I'm keep it, it pretty spoiler free. What I think is really fun because. We are big on to like, you know, Hollywood movie tours because we're big movie people, mm -hmm. as you know. And it was neat to see like the Universal Backlot kind of taking center stage to see like the Warner Brothers Tower. We have a friend uh, that works there. Yeah. Hi, Nicole. <laughs> she feeds the Animaniacs. But yeah, it was cool to see that part of it and then also to see things that we've never seen before, like somebody going into one of the, the stages to audition for a film. It was really neat. Oh, and they make great use of the Psycho House. We've been to that Psycho House, but we've never been in side so it was kind of cool to kind of get a little peek in there and the Bates went down yeah exactly so I love the setting um, and it's set in 1985 yeah 85 so all that good stuff's going on of course that's also kind of when they had uh, Richard Ramirez the Night Stalker and they talk about him a lot in this movie but whatever so you want to get into what we liked about it or yeah let's see um first the acting Mia Goth killed it I think the performances were great. You know, her and Kevin Bacon mm -hmm. were fantastic. There are a couple other people. I think her name is Bridget Monaghan. She she didn't really do a lot. But I mean, she did what she did well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I'm going to say the stand-up for me was the soundtrack. Oh, the soundtrack, yes. Very 85, just very, very rocking. Got St. Elmo's Fire in there. You've got Anna Motion, that you're my obsession. You know, you got uh, Betty Davis some eyes. rat. Yeah. Right. Uh, some good stuff in there. All kinds of good stuff. Like, it's a great soundtrack. It's going to get a nomination, obviously. And it's got some of those 80s vibes, like mm. VHS and video recorders and just a lot of things like turning on your TV and you just kind of have to watch whatever happens to be on. You know, especially if you don't have cable. And I don't think Maxine has got cable. No. So, yeah, it, it, it had some good 80s vibes that I really appreciated. The songs were great, the vibe, the look, it had that very kind of VHS look kind of going in for it. I loved it. So there, was, there was actually actually parts where they showed VHS footage and it just looked good. I like um, her friend. I don't get up what's wrong with his glasses and his arm. He loves his horror movies and I love There's it. There's a backstory there. I know, like, what, what, her, is he getting a prequel now? His glasses are broken and he's got a cast on the arm, so... Hmm, what's the story? I don't know, but he loves horror movies, and I love characters that love horror movies, so he's great. And, of course, uh, Maxine, as we know in X, was a porn star, and she's still kind of doing that in the beginning of this movie, but she's trying to transition to real movies. Of course, the most real horror movies of all, obviously, horror. 
That's something I think is really interesting because the other two films really played up on the whole sex in movies, which especially in slasher movies is a big part of it. I'm gonna say if you're coming into this one expecting some boobage or, you know, anything like that, it's not a very sexy movie. I don't remember... I don't know. There might have been some boobage, but I don't There's nothing loop. significant. There's definitely no sex scene, so it's very different than X. Mm -hmm. There was one sex scene um, with some boobage, but she was like, "Oh, oh hi, Maxine." Yeah. It was like it was just a day at the office. Yeah, it wasn't sexy though. <laughs> they're filming. They're filming an adult film, so mm -hmm. it's it's very different than X, which really played on the the sexuality of it. And I think even Pearl did to a degree. I will say there was some pretty shocking gore in here. I'm not going to spoil anything for you. But ah, nuts! It was oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nuts indeed. Yeah. Ugh. No. Um, By the way, smash that like button. Yeah. <laughs> smash it. Smash, smash it, it. it hard. No. If anything, there is like the sex is like punished in this movie. Like there's the killer seems to be anti-sex. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Punish. The cinematography was good. I don't think it was quite as good as it was like for Pearl though. So I will say. The bar was really high, and this is a, a decent movie. It's a decent movie. Uh, X and Pearl are above above the bar. They're a solid, like, four-star, you know, at the lowest, maybe a three and a half for X. I mean, for me, which was an unpopular opinion, but they were both standout films of the year. This is a decent movie. This is a movie you don't need to, in my opinion, run out to the cinema to see. You can rent this one at home. Uh, honestly, I feel like I want to watch this one on VHS. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it's just, it's a decent little slasher. It kind of feels a little bit like it Wiley e. Coyotes and the Roadrunners a little bit. Like it just kind of repeats the same scene over and over again where Kevin Bacon finds her and she has to get away and then Kevin Bacon finds her and then she has to get away. And it's like, okay, you know, it's like a little Roadrunner cartoon. It's not bad, it's entertaining, but it's nothing, it didn't feel new at all. Like the other ones felt, they felt like they were doing something new with it. The second time he like approaches her, did he not get the message that you gotta be careful when you're on set with Mia Goth? Because she whoops his ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Honestly, I'd probably rate all of them four stars, but this is definitely my lowest of the three. I mean, maybe my opinion will change if I rewatch them again, but. Pleased to meet you. I sorry. All right, without spoiling too much, like favorite kill or violent scene. Just because it's something I haven't seen before that, I'm not gonna spoil it for you at all. I'm gonna keep it very vague and just say the very first violent act in the movie, that was my favorite. I was literally, I'm so glad there was nobody else in the theater because I was like, holy shit, <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, it's the perks of kind of seeing it late. <laughs> no one else was with us. We had the whole theater to ourselves. Mine, well, I don't want to like go into it too much, but dogs don't know it's not bacon. <laughs> <laughs> There's some bacon bits there. Now that's just a scene of gore. I'm not gonna- Like you'll... Wild Things bacon bits? No. <laughs> but... <laughs> if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to explain too much what happens to Sir Bacon, but when you see it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. My other complaint, and I'm going to keep this as vague as possible in case you're one of the other people who haven't seen it yet, I didn't find anything about the climax at all shocking. Like, I'm going to say, like, a good five minutes into this, I was like, oh, I know where this is going, and mm -hmm. that's exactly where it went. I'll say, like, when I was watching Pearl, I was more invested with her and her, like, the characters and the story itself. But I kind of knew what Pearl's fate was. So I did like with Maxine that her fate and everything was a little more up in the air. But I was less invested in like the plot itself. You know what I think that is? I honestly, there's no character development in this movie. Like we talked about the mystery with the guy, but all of Maxine's character development happened in the last two movies. Well, it happened in the first movie. Yeah. Uh, if you hadn't seen the first movie, you really don't know anything about Maxine, mm -hmm. aside from what's implied in like flashbacks and stuff. Um, but Kevin Bacon isn't a fleshed out character. The cops are not fleshed out characters. Her friend is not a fleshed out character. We have no real three-dimensional characters on here. It's really relying heavily on, you saw X, right? You know, yeah. you saw that cool character, well, she's in this. Yeah. And Whereas like X and Pearl, they had great characters. Yeah, and they, they developed them a little better. So mm -hmm. I think they did like a little callback to X because there was a movie they were watching in the movie called like, what, The Great Alligator? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it showed like an alligator eating someone, so. Even the director, I thought she was gonna get a little more to do because she is a pretty big part of the movie, but mm -hmm. she does the exact same thing 
in every scene. Like she's a hard ass and that's her character and we don't really know why or what her motivations are outside of making a good movie. We've all got blood on our hands now. The only character I would say that maybe I didn't like necessarily see a lot of growth from but still surprised me on just how much he was willing to back Maxine was her agent. He's ride or die. Again, not getting to spoilers, I just didn't care for the ending. And it goes on way too long. There's a part in the ending where you're like, that's where it should end. And it goes on at least another 10 minutes. And you're just like, yeah. why is why is the movie still going? The movie should be over. Especially with it being a trilogy and how this perfect moment where it should have ended calls back to the original film. That's your ending. And yeah. now it just keeps going and it kind of it kind of fizzles out. Yeah. A little lackluster over there for just extra few minutes but it's fine guys i mean yeah. i like i like the friday the 13th movies i would never accuse them of having a lot of character death they are comfort food movies and while i think the acting and the cinematography definitely puts this in a grade above you know something like of that caliber thank you it's a fun slasher movie and it's not anything that i think i would remember if it wasn't part of this trilogy this one was a, almost a little bit like a just kind of a grindhouse action movie I wouldn't even say Grindhouse, but... Violent action movie, but not necessarily... Like, almost like noirish, maybe? Yeah, a little bit like that. Yeah, I'm not finding around... the right word for it, but... It's not sleazy enough to be Grindhouse. Yeah, which is weird. Which is weird. I think it would it be. It should have been sleazier. Well, let us know what you thought of Maxine down in the comments below if you've seen it. If not, what would you say? I'd say this is a see it, but I'm going to say this is like a stream it or rent it or you know what? They're probably going to release these in a trilogy box set. That's what I've been waiting for. You know, I mean, it's it's good. It's good. It's it's like it's like cheeseburgers. It's it's good. OK, it's, it's not a steak, which maybe Pearl was, but it's good. I like cheeseburgers. I like this movie. It's good. It's fine. I definitely give it a see it. And I'm glad I personally saw it in the theater just because we saw the other two. But if you haven't seen it in theaters at this point, there's probably other th horror movies you might want to check out. So, I don't know. Here's a question for you. Would you ever marathon these? Yeah. Yeah? I think once we do get that Blu-ray box, uh, I'm planning to marathon all three of them. I think it's something I might marathon maybe once or twice, but they are so different that I think they all... I don't know. I might be in different moods to watch them. But I think I would start with Pearl. Hmm, that's an interesting I would watch to go Pearl X, then Maxine. Just kind of do the timeline. And then you're even going chronologically through like yeah. like the history uh, mm -hmm. film and then also the history of like the characters and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm a fucking movie star.